The players have done an exceptional job. We've all had to deal with the new normal. So all sorts of things have been different. You know, you can't all assemble in the locker room and get dressed at the same time. You can't work out in the weight room at the same time because there's not enough space. Uh, and we would be in violation of uh, those, those uh, mandates from our university in the state of Maine. So all kinds of things. Uh, I think for the players, uh, you know, part of college life is to hang out with your buddies and, you know, go to uh, social gatherings that involve far more than what's allowable right now. So I think it's been pretty tough, but one of the things that, for, for everybody, but one of the things that our players have done, no matter what challenges have presented because of the COVID situation, they have met every challenge. And for the most part, what we have learned to do is, as a, as a hockey organization within the University of Maine, is we have learned to adapt out of necessity. You know, there's an old expression, necessity is the mother of invention. Well, that's what's happened here. Well, the seniors, first and foremost, besides what they can do on the ice, um, always bring, uh, a heightened uh, sense of urgency. Uh, for them, they know that this is their last opportunity uh, to play college hockey. Uh, they want to leave uh, a mark, a positive mark on this program. They want to win a championship before they walk away. All of those kinds of things. So the urgency that they bring becomes uh, infectious within the team. Okay, sometimes in particular freshmen, you know, you say, well, this is my year to get acclimated. But the seniors are out there saying, no, it's not. <laughs> you know, you've got to get to work and these are your jobs and this is what you have to do. And, and so that's, that's really important. And then what goes along with that is how they actually lead the entire group and how they hold themselves and their teammates accountable for doing the right things in all situations. Well, we, we believe we have an outstanding freshman class. I mean, we have two goalies in that class and, and one defenseman, but all three of those guys uh, have a chance to be exceptional players here uh, in our program. And then obviously the, the rest are, are forwards, you know, and, and when you look at a couple of guys uh, like Lyndon Breen and Brad Morrissey who hail from the Maritimes, you know, uh, we, we look to them to be, uh, to be outstanding players and, you know, so, so certain guys like John Malera and, and, and Donovan Hull will be the kind of players I think that are going to surprise an awful lot of people. They weren't well-known recruits necessarily, but uh, I think people are going to be pleasantly surprised with what they can do for our program. Matt Thiessen didn't have the opportunity to play much last season uh, because we had, well, the best goalie in the country, you know, if, if the Richter Award is, a, is, is the litmus test. So um, Matt has looked very good in practice so far. Uh, Victor Rossman comes to us from the USHL uh, via Stockholm, Sweden. So he's a very good goalie too. And, and uh, another USHL goalie, um, uh, Connor Andrulowicz, is, is, is also excellent. They're all big, they're all athletic. Uh, and that's probably the one position, if you ask me right now, who who's going to be in the lineup. You know, I can name you forwards and defensemen that I'm pretty sure we're going to be in the lineup when we play our first game. Uh, I can't tell you who's going to be in the net just yet. Well, the junior class, I mean, Jacob Schmitz Vestrup can shoot a puck like nobody's business, you know, and he also, he also brings that sort of raw intensity that uh, is, is not as common today as it may have been you know, a decade or two ago. And, and uh, 
when I say shoot the puck, I mean big time, you know, he can wire it. So he, he brings that to the table for certain. And when you, you think about Adam Daw, um, it starts with just extraordinary hockey sense and skill. Uh, the game, probably the best way to describe it, I think, is that for Adam Daw, the game is slower. What he sees and what you might see if you're skating, you know, out there, you may see it going like this, and Adam's, it's going like this, you know. And so he's an exceptional player, and we're going to need those guys to, to create offense for our hockey club. Foss was his own man, as is Quinny, you know, and, and Foss was probably uh, a little more, I mean, he could do it, he could be tough when he had to be, but uh, I think he was exceptional at creating harmony. And not that Jack is not, but Jack is, is more in the mold of what you think of in a leader, you know. Um, Jack is more boisterous. You know, Foss may be a, a little more understated, but at the same time, you know, very good. And when the time came that something had to be said with a, de a degree of intensity, you know, uh, Foss was able to rise to that. But I don't think that was his, his natural way of doing things. And, and last year, assuming the responsibility of being the captain, I think Foss became more aggressive you know, when the time was exactly right for it. And, uh, and, and Quinny has already sort of lightened things up, you know, because his personality is, is a little bit more, uh, for lack of a better term, aggressive. And so they're gonna do it in their own way, but, but, but they're both exceptional because they both understand that it's about the mission and the men. It's about what we're trying to accomplish here collectively and it's about helping your teammates be the best version of themselves on a daily basis and both of those guys are identical in that respect. All across New England, business owners are finding new ways to succeed. Families are working hard to provide for their loved ones and their future. It's the spirit of New Englanders that inspires all of us to do more. It's in our employees, our customers, and our communities. Every day we do more. Because at Bangor Savings Bank, we truly believe you matter more. What motivates us at Casella? I want to help our customers recycle as much as possible. Because I care about the environment and how our company impacts our towns. And at Casella Organics, we find new uses for all sorts of materials. It's hard work. But I'm helping people every day. And that makes me feel like part of the community. A community I care about. So I do everything I can to sustain the resources of our environment. Casella, dependable, caring people, part of your community. Out here, if you have the will, you can lead the way with the all-new Fisher Easy V V-Plow. Purpose built to provide industry-leading features, performance, and efficiency, just like the other V-Plows in our lineup, but in a lightweight design that's ideal for businesses and homeowners using half-ton trucks. A strong yet versatile plow that handles the work and won't back down. The all-new Fisher Easy V V-Plow, built for Fisher Nation. For more information, visit fisherplows.com.
I'm just really proud of the players and the staff to, to be able to persevere throughout this process. There's been a lot of ups and downs, uh, but at the end of the day, we were able to get a lot of quality work out here. Uh, had some fun today, uh, while also getting the young guys some, some more reps too. But just really, again, proud of this football team. We ended on a positive note. You know, today was was really about the unity and quality message that we're trying to push and, and social change. It's really critical to our team. You know, when you look at who's on our team, where they're from, the socioeconomic backgrounds, the racial backgrounds. Uh, you know, these guys go through a lot on a day-to-day -day basis um, that I think needs to be brought to light a little bit more. So I'm just really, really proud of this football team. Uh, this was a long journey. You know, I just said it to the team two seconds ago. Uh, it started in March. And for us to be able to get through 13 practices and be here this whole time uh, while continuing to be a student athlete as well, um, I really can't ask for much more. So I'm just, again, proud of this football team. Just with you know the state of the country right now, and, and even you know I think everybody looks at it in a very general level, but these guys go through a lot on a day-to-day -day basis here, um, just with who we have on this team, and I, and I think that that's something that we really wanted to demonstrate about today. That's something that I feel like I need to be a, a voice for them for, and then also bring to light you know what their issues are in their own way. So I think there's that aspect of it, and then in terms of football, we got pretty banged up. It's been a long time. It had been 321 days since we had practiced before practice number one. Uh, so certainly that took some time to get used to, but at the same time, I thought these guys really worked through it. And again, we finished on a positive note. That means a lot. That means a lot to us, especially this team is so diverse. We come from so many different places, and we just and we just wanted to do our part, just leave a lasting impact. So right before we left, right before our last practice, we wanted to leave our mark. And I thought it was real cool that we decided to put it on the stadium. So when everyone drives by, comes comes for a jog or a walk, or even use the field, like they can see we we met, we mean. We mean what we what we say all the time, and we want to be part of change. It was really cool to see. Um, I mean, you look around; there's a ton of posters out there, so it's really cool to see all the team participate in something like that. Really, just shows how we uh, come together for anything. Um, we're all brothers in there. We always call ourselves a family, and I feel like that showed us the most today. And it's pretty cool because as student athletes, we're often thought as just we're here to, we're here for school and for sports and do our jobs. But being able to branch out socially and show that. that we want to be part of change also, and we're with them. I think it means a lot to them as, as much as it means to us. I mean, it was, it was well deserved. We needed to do it, you know. Um, times have been tough out here, and some things are bigger than football, so I was glad we were able to come together as a team and deliver a strong message that the team was behind and uh, everyone supported. So to be able to come out there and show the community that we represent, that uh, we're behind them, and we hope they're behind us was very important to us as a team. A special experience. Again, I'm not from this country. I'm just gonna say that. I'm originally from where I'm from. I'm from Toronto, Canada. But at the day, me being myself, I'm a black man in this country as well too. I don't live here, but I am and living in this country to get what I need. I like I said Black Lives Matter matters. You have people representing Latino lives, but we support Black Lives Matter. So it's not just the individual here, but we're all a family and it's a family at the end of the day. And for us to come in here and do that, we just wanted to speak our minds and allow the, you know, us as a family to come together and plan that out and just do something that we can represent and spread awareness and just try to, you know, be, um, what do you say, um, up to the times, basically. And so that we're here, we're now, we're not, we, just because we're in May, wherever we are, we're here with it, we're gonna support everywhere we can. I mean, I, I just, again, I think it, it was a long journey to get here and to, cultivate leadership on this team it's very hard in a pandemic it really is you know when you're not in season testing you know we're surveillance testing and uh, we've tested these guys hundreds of times at this point uh, we haven't had a positive um, so that's credit to our players once again uh, but that's just again team coming together and to see that turnout because uh, you know I wanted to make it their own messaging through the themes that we wanted as a team to do but that's them you know it's all about the players I don't play you know my job is to be the head coach I'm their voice I represent them I organize this thing um, obviously I'm very very involved in our every operation that we do but at the end of the day we're only as good as our players can take us and um, I thought today was a very unifying moment for our team. All across New England, business owners are finding new ways to succeed. Families are working hard to provide for their loved ones and their future. It's the spirit of New Englanders that inspires all of us to do more. It's in our employees, our customers, and our communities. Every day we do more. Because at Bangor Savings Bank, we truly believe you matter more. us at Casella? I want to help our customers recycle as much as possible. 
because I care about the environment and how our company impacts our towns. And at Casella Organics, we find new uses for all sorts of materials. It's hard work. But I'm helping people every day. And that makes me feel like part of the community. A community I care about. So I do everything I can to sustain the resources of our environment. Casella, dependable, caring people, part of your community. Out here, if you have the will, you can lead the way with the all-new Fisher EZV V-Plow. Purpose-built to provide industry-leading features, performance, and efficiency, just like the other V-Plows in our lineup, but in a lightweight design that's ideal for businesses and homeowners using half-ton trucks. A strong yet versatile plow that handles the work and won't back down. The all-new Fisher EZV V-Plow, built for Fisher Nation. For more information, visit fisherplows.com. Do you know your main dairy farmers? Chances are we're a lot like you. We are parents, grandparents, we are small business owners. We are a part of our communities. We are your neighbors. We are undeniably dairy. Black Bear Nation. It's time for your Medical Minute presented by Select Physical Therapy. Here's Derek Lupin. Hi, I'm Derek Lupin with Select Physical Therapy, here with your Black Bear Medical Minute. Today we're talking about instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization. Injury and many conditions often lead to muscular guarding and pain. Instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization is a manual therapy treatment technique that helps detect and treat areas exhibiting scar tissue, soft tissue restriction, adhesions, or chronic inflammation. Instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization can normalize muscles, tendons, ligaments to decrease pain, improve mobility, and stimulate rehabilitation and recovery. It can treat injuries such as tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, cannulis tendonitis, and the areas with excessive scarring and even running-related injuries. I'm Derek Lupin, and this has been your Black Bear Medical Minute. Welcome to the Masters. Welcome to the Masters. All right, we have our four teams, very similar to dodgeball, and this is the way it works, all right? Is we're gonna have one team here, one team here, the next two will go after that. You get one shot. It's closest to the pin, that is obviously the pin. Every group will have a winner, and you move on to the last round of this championship, in which you get one of those beautiful humane jackets that's sitting over there. Uh, again, oh my God. On, uh, all right. We're going to win. We're going to win. I ain't going to win. I ain't going to win. A lot of the things that we've been doing have been really trying to integrate the groups because a lot of these guys don't know each other. You know, we have 32 freshmen, um, we're wearing masks all the time, uh, they have their names on their helmets, but aside from that, it's hard to get, you know, a freshman in an opposite position interacting with a senior. So that's what a lot of what we've been doing, you know, obviously it's been football centric, but uh, we've had some fun as well, like, you know, we played golf the other day, things like that. But those circuits, they're designed to get guys around each other that just normally aren't around each other. Keep saying it, we have a 
young team that's played a lot of football. You know, we don't have a million seniors. Um, we have strong leadership, but it needs to continue to be cultivated. And throughout kind of some different experiences we had for the last really two weeks, I think we learned a lot about how we need to keep cultivating that and growing the leadership on this team because just because you've played a lot doesn't mean necessarily that you move into that leadership role right away. I think that has to happen organically, but sometimes it's got to get moved along a little bit. And I think we learned that really in the last couple of weeks, and now I feel really confident going into this quick off season um, and hopefully getting these guys back here in January. The only way to really uh, practice football is by practicing football. You know, it's, you can be in pods, you can do these things that are non-contact, but at the end of the day, there, there's certain limitations. You know, uh, for offensive or defensive linemen, it doesn't matter whether you're going tag, thud, or live, it's all the same to them. So at the same time, I think that, that took a minute to really get acclimated to. Um, but, you know, I thought they fought through it, especially physically and then ultimately mentally towards the end, because I think we had to scale it back a little bit really in the last two weeks, but that was the right decision. Well, first of all, you know, right now we're in four different locker rooms. I think, you know, just finding a good supply of music before practice and cell phones playing music and uh, learning to warm up before practice and learning to be close as a team, you know, via Zoom versus, you know, obviously in-person things. So, you know, I think, I think the best thing about them so far through these weeks is just their sense of humor. I think they've really... Uh, obviously we are dealing with a lot of serious things and we need to make sure we're doing what we're safe but 
Uh, I think they've really enjoyed being together on the ice. I think they've found ways to, to have fun, to have jokes, whether it's a Snapchat uh, or text messages or, you know, little things that they're doing as a team to, to make sure they're staying connected and laughing. So it's been good. It's been very positive. They've had a great attitude and it's been, it's really been fun to work with them so far. I think, I think, you know, with our program, we've had some success the last three years. Um, we've been through, you know, not making the playoffs. We've been to making it to the, the, the final four championship weekend for hockey East twice. So I think that's the biggest thing, just knowing what it takes to have some success, knowing what it takes, you know, what, knowing what happens when you don't have success and maybe what was missing. Uh, you know, they were, they following up a very big senior class uh, graduating last year. So. Uh, I think they're excited for that leadership role, but that, the experience of, of, of going through those ups and downs, I think, is the biggest thing that they're able to bring to the team, and especially the freshmen. Yeah, I, I mean, they're in the dorms, obviously a lot of rules, a lot of regulations. Um, I, I think they've been great. They've really found ways, like we talked about uh, earlier, to, to connect, to get to know each other. They're from all over the world. Uh, and I think the upperclassmen, especially those seniors, have, you know, they, they sometimes when you're a senior, it's hard to remember what it's like when you were a freshman just because it was a while ago. But they've done an excellent job of, of really trying to connect the upperclassmen to the freshmen. Uh, well, I think up front we have the twins, uh, Morgan and Allie Trimper. They're from Bangor. They're pretty well known in the area. And uh, freshmen last year coming out of prep school, they had a good year. Um, but I think this year they're definitely going to be relying on more. They're very fast. They're tenacious. They played at Bangor High for a few years before they went to prep school. So they, they know the physicality of the boys game. Uh, so we're, very, we're looking for them to, to step up big. And then uh, we have three returning D who are, who are all sophomores this year. Uh, and they've they've played in some 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 big games and some big roles, but this year they're going to be relied on if we're going to have any success. So that's Ella McLean, uh, Nicole Payton, and um, Amelia Anderson. Did you have this year? Yeah, our oh, senior. senior. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's a junior because she's I guess she's coming back next year too. Okay, there we go. Um, but uh, no, we've we've been very lucky in that. Uh, you know, for for Lauren Porter, she's kind of been stuck behind Carly a little bit the last three years. She's played uh, in each of her first three years. She's had some really good wins, so she's had some shutouts. Um, you know, I think if Carly wasn't here, she would. She has no problem being a starting goalie at the Division One level. So, you know, we're gonna rely on her and, and she's she's definitely ready for this opportunity. Um, but Jordan Madison and Anna LaRose uh, have come in pretty seamlessly and fit into our culture. They've worked hard and and Lauren's been a really good mentor and I think it's going to be a really good trio this year. Yeah, I think for, for them, their, their identity is definitely their work ethic. Um, you know, I would say none of them really came in and just had an amazing freshman year or just stood out right away in practice. Like, there was some skill there and we knew there was some talent, but they've all hit their bumps and uh, I think with that junior class, they're all impact players now, and it's because they've kind of went through that adversity from their own game, you know, whether it's some of the Europeans learning to play the North American style or getting used to it, or, um, you know, Allie Johnson and Allie Belts, you know, coming from the Midwest and learning to play the college level and learning to fit into the culture of our team. So um, it's, it's been a really impactful class and, and really proud of kind of how they've developed and looking for big things out of them this year. Yeah, no, I think with Teresa, um, you know, I, I very rarely ever seen a player who can control the puck like that, who can control the play like that. And, you know, I think she was a large identity of kind of how we played in our team. Uh, and I think at times, you know, we, we obviously relied on her and she produced. Um, but I think too, you know, she, you know, she would miss some games, whether she was with the Czech national team or maybe an injury or something. And I think there's a sense that, you know, okay, well, she's not here anymore. She's not in the lineup. Like, we have to do this more collectively. We've got to figure out a way to create offense. We've got to figure out a way to score goals. We've got to figure out a way to control the puck. Um, so obviously a huge, huge hole to fill, a very dynamic player. Um, but I think, I think our team is kind of ready to take that next step and kind of pick up, you know, pick up what she left off.